Welcome back to another episode of the Capes and Tights podcast right here on capesandtights.com. I'm your host, Justin Soderbergh. This episode, we welcome a uh, writer extraordinaire, uh, Jordan Morris, to the program. Jordan is a comedy writer with experience writing TV, features, comics, podcasts, digital comedy, and video games. Uh, he has written for HBO Max, Disney+, Plus, Comedy Central, Cartoon Network, YouTube Originals, and more. Uh, his, his graphic novel, Bubble, was nominated for two Eisner Awards, which is pretty badass. Uh, and his latest comic graphic novel, Youth Group, with Bowen McCurdy, is coming out July 16th and 17th at bookstores in the LCS shops, just in time for this podcast to drop. So enjoy this episode with Jordan Morris, writer of Youth Group. But before you do, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Blue Sky, Threads, all those things, and subscribe, rate, review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and wherever you find your podcasts, and always visit capesandtights.com. But this is Jordan Morris talking comics right here on Capes and Tights. Enjoy, everyone. Welcome, uh, Jordan. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. You're good. Yeah, I'm glad to be on the podcast. Like I said, you know, we talked a little bit before about, uh, you know, getting ready to, to do this. Uh, and, and we said, I said, Hey, can you do it in July? <laughs> Cause I want to put out the, put out the podcast right around the time that your book comes out youth group. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm really excited to talk about it. I hope you're excited to talk about it. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Yeah. The thrilled to be here. And I'm, I'm thrilled about youth group. I'm so stoked. <laughs> I think as we're recording this, it'll be out in like two weeks. Uh, yes. yeah, it's surreal. I'm stoked. Well, uh, you know, you've, you've been uh, promoting this book for a long time because, like I said, in the FOC world uh, of of comics, uh, you, you have like a single issue that comes out and you're trying to get this promoting in there. But you've been promoting this book for a very long time. And finally, it's here. You must be excited for that. I am. I'm stoked. Yes. So with 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 graphic novels like the ones that uh, First Second puts out, the publisher mm -hmm. of Youth Group, um, you can you can start that pre-order flog in uh, like a year before the book comes out. And I'm I'm just really excited about this book. It's kind of like personal to me in a weird way. It is I'm really proud of it. I think Bowen did a great job with the art. So I've been flogging hard. Um, you know, I y your show is obviously very special and I'm so glad you asked me. But this is my 10,000th podcast. I've yes. done. <laughs> yes. I am really stoked to talk about the book and happy to do it uh, to whoever wants me to do it. Um, but yeah, the the uh, <laughs> yeah, the 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 promo the promo has been a marathon, not a sprint. Um, but I'm stoked. If that means more people check it out, then then I'm I'm happy to do it. Yeah, it, it's it's weird because you know uh, you also as a comic book person, we find out in the comic book world, you do a lot of the promotion yourself. Even though yes. First Second is the one that's like you know publishing the book and they're doing their their due diligence as well to get people to buy it, you know, and, and, and all these other people are trying to do this too. But like, you have to get on the streets and basically be like, buy my graphic novel. Um, and, and yes, especially, I have a I mean, sandwich board. <laughs> yes. You walk down the street, you're like, buy this graphic novel off of me. Um, but you also have to like, with the name youth group too. I mean, I grew up in youth groups too. So yeah. this is why this, this, this kind of hit home in a way that was weird and, uh, you know, exciting and, and funny uh, uh, reading it. Cause I'm like a lot of the stuff that you talk about in the book, I'm like, Oh, I remember those days. Well, not yeah, not as much as the crazy stuff that happens in the book, but like the more generic stuff that happens in the book. <laughs> yeah, I should say Youth Group. It is a, a YA horror comedy yes. about uh, goofy teenage exorcists. They are part of a kind of a cool Bible study group. Uh, I was in one of these growing up. Um, you know, you had a youth pastor with tattoo sleeves. He turned the chair around backwards before he gave it to you straight. Um yeah, these these were just such funny, weird little organizations, and yeah, I'd always kind of wanted to write about one. So yeah, I think I think it it is set in one of these, uh, in one of these kind of like real life familiar teen Bible studies groups, uh, but it goes to crazy supernatural places it turns out that the kids in 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 youth group actually actually have to do exorcisms so um yeah, that's the uh, that's the horror twist yes it, it, it's uh it's a funny story but also has some action moments in there uh, funny enough speaking of funny enough the the world of comics people say is are funny funny books like they they say yeah. funny books as a generic term for comic books Although we know as people in the comic book world, it is a there's horror comic books, there's, you know, drama, there's action, there's all kinds of different comic books nowadays. But telling a funny story can actually be 
can be hard, yeah. oddly enough, because of the fact that I think comedy is so subjective that some people might read it differently because it's a comedy book versus not a comedy book. Do you find it hard to try to tell people to read this book being a being funny book behind it? Yeah, it is It is a real odd duck genre-wise, and I realize that. And that's part of the reason why I'm out there flogging so hard is because, you know, I think somebody needs to stump for this thing. It, you know, does not feature Batman on the cover. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I understand how you might you, you might go past it as you're, uh, you know, browsing, browsing in the LCS. Yes. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I personally really like it when there's a little bit of comedy in my horror. Like, I love Shaun of the Dead. I love Buffy mm -hmm. the Vampire Slayer. I think that those two, two things just really party well together. I like that flavor. Um, and, yeah, and I, I think it is not something you see a ton in comics. Um, but, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that makes us stand out rather than, um, you know, sinks the ship so uh yeah I, I i think it can be done and i i think that like part of the reason the comedy works so well in youth group is is bowen's great work bowen mm. mcgurdy the artist on the book like I, I think people talk a lot about how comedy is tough in comics because of timing right mm -hmm. like you can't have pause or it's harder to have pauses i guess i should say you can't and it's kind of hard to like show people's reactions to jokes sometimes like um you know i feel like i sometimes when i am reading a comic it feels like the writer and artist sometimes are like just doing their own thing mm -hmm. like you'll see this great joke or you'll read this great joke like thor like thor will say something funny and then the panel is just him like wailing on a goblin and the drawing will be beautiful and the joke will be beautiful, but they're not really taking each other into account, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it is kind of just like somebody wrote a joke, somebody drew a picture, and they found a way to mash them up. Um, but I think that like when when the artist and writer are kind of trying to do the same thing and they have the same goal, the comedy can work really well in 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 comics. Um, you know, and I think that a part of the reason that Bowen's style is so good for this is, like, the acting of Bowen's characters are so great. Like, they have such lively facial expressions. They have such clear reactions to things. And, like, comedy isn't just someone saying something funny, but it's someone reacting to someone saying something funny, right? Like you know every the the comedy cliche is there's a funny funny person and a straight person right yes. and i think you need to see that reaction to the funny thing being said and i think that like bowen's just super expressive characters with like really clear big emotions just they i think they help juice the comedy in such a great way it, it does and do you how did you speaking of, of bowen how did you get partnered up with bowen for this for this project uh, sure, yeah. So that was Callista Brill, my editor over at First Second. Um, I brought this pitch to her, and she liked it, had a bunch of great notes for it. And then kind of the artist search started. And mm -hmm. um, I think the first the first email I got about the subject was, hey, we're going to start the artist search. Uh, first person I want you to take a look at is Bowen McGurdy. And she <laughs> sent me a bunch of Bowen's work. And I'm like, we can stop the search if you want to. If Bowen will do it, let's get Bowen to do it. And we didn't look at anybody else. Like, we, the, it just stopped there because, um, I mean, I just, like, saw it and I'm like, this is perfect. And, yeah, I'm so lucky Bowen wanted to do it. Uh, they've got a very full dance card these days. Uh, very, very in-demand artist for a good reason. Um, yeah, and I'm so glad they made time for our book. It, it, I wanted to mention that because it, the artwork does work so cohesively to it together and, and the the comedy, the jokes, all those things, the expressions. I even wrote that when we did our review was like it was so big to me. that And there's sometimes that like that stuff jumps out to you in a bad way, like it's mm -hmm. too over the top uh, to try to sell the joke. But I feel yeah. like you and Bowen work so well together and it seemed like you, you two would have been like – friends for a long time and this is like the fourth or fifth book that you've worked <laughs> yeah. on together you know what i mean like it, it seems experienced in uh, together re uh, reading each other's minds even uh in this book and that's why i feel like it works so well yeah i i think it was a really good match and i really credit Callista over it for a second for that i think like she 
you know, she knew the exact person for the job. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm really lucky. I'm really lucky that, uh, that, that we got to do this together. Uh, it, it was to start off as a, you know, uh, first, second was the, was the publisher you pitched it to. So it obviously started off as a graphic novel. Did you ever have any mind in, in your, in your thoughts in your mind, you wanted to do some sort of, uh, you know, uh, you know, floppy single issue release, or was it always in your mind just as a graphic novel? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I pitched it with format in mind. Um, I, the first second are the first people I pitched it to and mm. they said yes. So I said, let's do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, um, it, it, uh, you know, there wasn't a bidding war or anything from, <laughs> from, uh, from several different parties. Um, I loved working with first second on our book bubble, uh, the sci-fi comedy book bubble, uh, that I did with a great writer named Sarah Morgan, great artist named Tony Cliff. And I just loved the process of bubble. And I'm just like, if, if they want to do the next book, they, should do the next book. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is a story that you could have told in floppies, but um, yeah, I, I, I like it as it is. It, it feels like something you can kind of like sit down and read, uh, you know, in a day or over the course of a weekend. And yeah, I think that's kind of cool and fun. And it's a beautiful book too. It really looks oh, nice. So it's gorgeous. Um, and, and, and selfishly, I like it as someone on this side because, you know, we discussed the idea of you coming on to talk about the book. And a lot of times I talk to a lot of people where I read issue one, of like a five issue yeah, mini series sure. or like a 10 issue series and you get to issue read issue one maybe issue one and two and so you get an idea of where the story is going to go but you really don't know the entire story and so yeah. like selfishly when, when when someone has a graphic novel or a completed work that you get to see prior to talking to them or prior to doing the review you get the whole picture and that's right. what's nice about something about a graphic novel and in and, and first second's a great uh publisher to work with we've actually had a couple of people on who have published things through first second they said nothing but great things and, and it's getting that full complete thing you're like okay Okay, I got the whole story. So we can actually yeah. talk. Not that we're going to spoil anything because I really want people to read the book and, and spoiling it to me is, you know, if we talked about this book two years from now or a year from now, I feel like you could spoil things, but I really want people to read the book. So we're not going to spoil much on this thing, if anything. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that it's nice having that cohesive story and knowing how it ends up in the end when I get to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, I, I would love for this to be a book that not just like comics people pick up, but also yes. if, you know, you're an occasional comics reader or, you know, you need a present for a teenager who doesn't read a ton of comics. Like, yeah, I and I think that, like, stories that have beginnings, middles, and ends are just easier for occasional comics readers to pick up. I think that, like, I love monthlies. I get them. I was at Comics Factory in Pasadena yesterday getting my mm -hmm. monthlies. But I know that the reason a lot of people don't try comics is because that monthly structure is just a little bit hard to dig into sometimes so yeah i i i, I like the fact that um you know I, I can pitch this book to a ton of different people and it's in bookstores and that's the other thing about it's cool about graphic novels or trade collections is the fact that you now when i when i say to someone where can i get this Anywhere that sells books, basically, right. you can get it because <laughs> yeah. you just have to go to them. They may not, you know, if there's a, uh, you know, a niche bookstore in your down, like we have a small bookstore, Briar Patch, in downtown Bangor in the town I live in, right. and it's Shout very small. Patch. Yeah, it's very small. So, like, they can't really carry everything. And But if I say to them, hey, I really want this book. It's coming out on July 16th, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Gibran there would get it and stock it. In all likelihood for me, it's different than maybe other people. If I go in there and say I want it, he might buy three or four copies so that right. he can actually stock it. Uh, or if you, if someone does order it for someone, someone goes into your bookstore and asks for a book, sometimes they'll order one because that's they want to make sure they sell the right. one that, you know. But a lot of times, like my LCS owner will carry this book because – if you're to order one, you might as well order one or two because right. then you can put it on the shelf. And if you sell it, you sell it. If you don't, you don't. But it's not like you're, you know, hampering by carrying 30 of something that you don't know about. But if you go to your LCS or your bookstore owner and say, I want this book, they can get it for you. And that's what's cool about a, a graphic novel, I think, over a floppy is that a floppy comic, that story has to wait until it's in a collected edition, which is potentially a year after sure. the first issue comes out uh, that you can get it at your bookstore. And not everybody has a comic bookstore. So, yeah. Go to your local bookstore because they can get it for you, which is really cool. Yeah, hey, from your lips to God's ears, I love love that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, part of the, part of the you know part of the promo marathon is like getting people to pre order, and it's that exact thing that you said. I mean, you really put it well. It's it's that like if you do go up to a bookstore employee, if you go up to a bookseller and you order one, maybe this wasn't something that was on their radar. Like maybe you know maybe they breezed by it maybe it's not something they would usually carry but because they have to check it out to 
order it for you, they yeah, they might get a couple more copies, and that's a couple more copies that someone might just uh, see when they're browsing. So yeah, uh, um, uh, we love it. I I second everything you said. At first, second two gets just to breathe a little bit when you pre-order it because they're like, okay, we're gonna print a bunch of these for Jordan sure. and, and Bowen, uh, <laughs> right. but let's okay, we sold already sold a bunch of them, so we're okay. Like it's a publishing is a very uh, you know uh, you know uh, risky uh, industry, and, and yeah. so if you have a bunch of pre-orders out there or at least orders within the first few weeks of it coming out to past uh, publication, it makes the publisher breathe a little easier that this is going to be okay. Not that they don't have faith in you. It's just nice of to course, have faith in sales. Yes. <laughs> numbers, yeah. numbers count. Like they do count. No kidding. I know. Yes. If you, Hey, if you're, if you're a fan of a creator out there, but definitely, definitely look into pre-ordering their work. It yes, really exactly. Yeah. Uh, but like, so you have, you've written bubble, uh, which is based off of a podcast mm -hmm. that you created. It is. Um, yes. And, and so there's one way of telling a story. This is obviously different than that. And, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, like it's a different story. What made comics the story you wanted to tell this? In? And obviously you went to you went to for a second to pitch yeah. it to them. But like, you know, why wasn't you working TV, you working features? Like, oh, sure. why wasn't this something like that? Why, what, what made comics the venue you wanted to tell this in, the story? In? Well, yeah, it, it's something we were talking about earlier. It, it's it's the fact that it is such a weird genre thing, right? Like the horror in youth group is taken pretty seriously, but there's a lot of jokes in it. There's a lot of jokes and there's kind of big teen feelings and there's family drama. So it's like, it, it's, a, it's a little bit hard to characterize, right? And I think that like comics readers are so much more adventurous than other readers, right? And I think they go with genre stuff like, you don't have to explain how possession works because comics readers are like, yeah, I've read possession stories. I've read religious horror. I've watched mm -hmm. religious horror. I know how this works. Let's get on with the story. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just, I love, I love making comics because you're making them for comics readers. Mm -hmm. And like, I think that just like, if you grow up reading, Spider-Man and X-Men and you read Saga and you read Sex Criminals, like you're just okay with stuff that's a little weirder genre-wise. And I think that because Youth Group is kind of a mishmash, it's kind of a gumbo, um, I think that I can trust that like comics readers will go on that ride. Yes. It's a, it's a thing that I've always said is that when I talk to people is like I've been a Marvel fan since the, you know I got into comics for the first you know yeah. first comic I read and I'm, I'm I don't really like DC that much I, I I dabble in it a little bit but like Marvel's been my thing but over the past what I don't know two three years it's really taken a big backseat to independent stuff and it's not uh -huh. because it's independent versus you know the big big right. two it, it's more along the lines that I felt like it's the same stories being told over and over again with sure. different artists, different writer, different colorists, things like that. Whereas your independent side, there's so many different unique takes or unique stories that are being told that like youth group would never end up being in a Marvel universe. You know this, sure. we know this. And so getting this ability to read a book that's different than anything else that's out there right now or, or mostly different than anything else that's out there right now, uh, it does wonders because there's such a big variety of comic books nowadays to read that you kind of have to stand out and i feel like yeah with you crew you do that you, know, you maybe you need a little bit of explanation behind it but that's why you have people working in a comic book store or a bookstore that's why you're doing out this with your you yeah. know your billboard <laughs> out, out front of a, mm -hmm. a store your sandwich board telling people about it um but it's different and i think that's huge to me because i like horror I like comedy. Yeah. I like the two together. Uh, I, I, I'm a recovering youth group attendee. No, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no but, uh, my, my parents are going to love that. My dad's actually a pastor. So my parents oh, are going to yeah? love that comment that they listen oh, to this episode. My, mom, my mom's <laughs> in the other room watching my kids actually. But no, um, the, uh, the, the youth group part of it, it does resonate to those people who have been part of youth groups. Yeah. Uh, but it's different. It's just, that's my big point, I think. The point of it is, is that it's different than most stuff that's out there right now, which I think to me stands out as a comic book reader as something I want to attach myself to because I need that different thing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I, I, yeah, I think if you're a comics reader, like you're also like a pop culture person, mm -hmm. right? Like I think I think comics readers tend to be like really enthusiastic pop culture people who just, they love it all, they, they're adventurous. And I think that 
like they want a surprise. They want something that's a little bit weirder. Um, I read a great book recently. It's called Lunar New Year Love Story. Um, this is Jean Luen Yang and Luyen Pham, um, a writer and artist respectively. And it is, it's a graphic novel and it's like, it's like a rom-com, right? Like it, it has a pretty familiar rom-com set up. It is a teen girl. She's got two hunky guys who both like her and she has to choose between one's a little more enthusiastic, one's a little more brooding. So this is all familiar stuff, right? Like we've, we've seen this story, but like it just goes to some weird places. She's mm. haunted by the ghosts of Catholic saints. She's has this kind of intense family mystery that's unraveling itself. It's a rom-com. It's a ghost story. It's a family drama. And I'm like, this is so wonderful. This is so specific. <laughs> if they went to, as someone who's worked in TV and film, I could kind of imagine how that pitch would go <laughs> as a movie. It would be like, do we need the ghosts of Catholic saints? Can this just be, do we need that? Is that, you know, and they would, and, and you know, I think a lot of interesting, cool genre stuff gets made in TV and film, but it's harder. Like, it just it's the stuff so expensive it needs to be a little more middle of the road you see uh, like the rough edges getting sanded off something and like i like rough edges you know i like it when something's a little weirder and harder to categorize so um you know i i, I think that's just just part of what i think makes comics so great for a youth group is that it's 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 weird it, it, it's weird, and I, I, what I try to pitch to people too about comics. Uh, I read a lot of novels too. I listen to audiobooks, mm -hmm. uh, and so when I talk about these things to certain people, I'm always like, "You can't always watch TV and movies. Like you have sure. to do something else." There's, I, it's big right now. It's massive right now. How many people have you seen that show? Have you seen that movie? Right. And, and, and but like with other mediums, if you want a visual medium comics to me is that thing because you can't always be in front of your tv but if yeah. you're waiting for a, a doctor's appointment and you're in the lobby area you can either be on you can either bring your graphic novel with you or you can have your ipad out and, and be reading it on there um if you're like outside at the lake uh in a summer day and you want to read something you, you, yes you can bring your ipad and watch your ipad but like i feel like there's you can't always be glued to these things so some of these things feel even even if youth group you know, got picked up an option for a, for a TV show or a movie. It would be cool. We all like it. Anybody who sure. stands of it, but it's yeah. like, sometimes you just need this thing to be something else so that you can enjoy and, and take in this story and this graphical thing, this, this visual medium in a different format. And sometimes that's what sells me to be comic books in general. It's like, I would love all of my favorite comics to be adapted. That'd be great. Cause I'd like sure. to get to see it again in a different format. But yeah. sometimes it's just nice to be what it is. It's like it's a I know. Book. Yeah, and there are great adaptations, right? Like, it's, and I'm not saying it can't happen or yeah. that it wouldn't happen, yeah. but like, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes the comic is just the thing. Like, sometimes yeah. that's the story, and if you loved it, you loved it, and you know, <laughs> there's no reason to see Sydney Sweeney <laughs> placed yes, into yes. it somehow. Yes. <laughs> um, I see you're already casting, though. I, I see that though. Yeah. your brain's working already, though. No. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And the funny thing, and the Sydney, great thing if about you're out there, call me. Yes, I've got a great part me, exactly. for you. No. Um, yeah, okay. But yeah, oh, but, but but yeah, I think I think I think because comic book media is such a big deal, because there are so many big movies and TV shows based on comics, like people do get really wrapped up in like, how would you adapt this and who would direct it and who would, you know, and, and that stuff is fun to think about, but like, I don't, I don't know. I, sometimes it feels like we're not engaging the comic as a comic. Yeah. You're not living in the moment of, of the sure. actual, of the actual comic. Book. You're not reading this at the end. There are definitely comic books at the end. You're like, that would be really cool to see as a adaptation. Yeah. And I think most of the things you do like, again, to me, is my, my argument for the Star Wars universe is that people go, oh, that the, the last three movies were absolute crap. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, but they made them. Like as a Star Wars fan, I was like, sure. I got to see stuff on a big screen. I don't care if it's good, bad, ugly, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. I got to go to the movie theater and see another Star Wars project as a Star Wars fan. That was amazing. Like I don't, mm. whatever, if it's bad or not. Like it, it doesn't mean it's being made. That's all I care about somewhat. Um, but like, you know, living in the moment of actually just reading the comic book for what it is, is also great. And, and, and you and Bowen did such a great job with youth group being like fun, rompy, and also energetic like the, it, it, the, yeah. the, the, the 
artwork jumps off the page sure and does, so it's yeah. almost motion it's almost a motion in that as it is like a motion picture as it is because it's so well drawn uh, and so that also adds to why just living in the moment of, of, of the youth group being a comic book is, is a great thing yeah bowen does so much creative stuff with the paneling and this and such interesting things with format just a real yeah i mean a genius i i was constantly just so thrilled getting the pages back and uh yeah getting to getting to see what they had done with it it's really like i'm 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 thrilled i i <laughs> i don't have more interesting ways of saying it I'm how thrilled you are yeah. <laughs> yeah how long did it take to do this is this something you've been working on for a long time and it just finally is now going to be in print or is this something that came up pretty quickly uh oh no no a while yeah so this has been we've been we've been uh uh we've been poke, poking away at this thing for a while so i wrote this script like height of pandemic i wrote this okay. script like in my house and you know, while I was still wiping down my groceries, I remember those days. <laughs> um, and yeah, so so I wrote the script, and then um, Bowen, as I mentioned, had a pretty full dance card, uh, yes. pretty pretty in demand artist. So we had to like wait a little bit for their schedule to to allow for them to draw a giant <laughs> hundred and one page script. Um, so yeah, so it, it's definitely been in the works for a while, and okay. uh, as as we mentioned, first seconds books are very attractive, uh, mm -hmm. but they take a little longer to print mm -hmm. uh, for that reason. So um, yeah, I think with the floppy comic, it can be you know on the stands a couple months after you write it, but um, uh, with something like this, it just it takes a while, and um, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely the waiting is like hard, and you're excited and you want it to be out there, but I'm I'm just so thrilled with the result that I'm. Uh, not that bad about the waiting anymore. It's, it's funny you you you're excited for it, but also you, I'm guessing you're probably a little nervous. And how I mean, you've had a lot of people review this thing, and it's been sure. overall positive. I, what I've seen yeah. has been overall po positive on it. So you kind of have an idea of how people will, will expect or how you expect people to read this and, and, and understand it and like it. Um, but I also, me personally, I get nervous when things like finally release. You're like, oh, oh sure, people are gonna yeah. like it. <laughs> are people gonna like it? Are they gonna understand what I was trying to get across to you, or are yeah. they just gonna be like miffed to what's going on in youth crew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know. And and there's a little added element to this too, because it's really personal. Like yeah. like I put a lot of personal details from my childhood in it. And there's not like a self insert character or anything. I don't think there's a person in it where you're like, this is the writer, <laughs> you know, this is him. But like um you know, I did just populate it with kids I grew up with and you know the family in the story is going through a lot of the same stuff my family was going through at that age and so like it does feel very autobiographical to me I mean it's like about fighting demons so it's not that autobiographical I, I was gonna but... say, is that the autobiographical part is the fighting demons <laughs> no. part is like yes, yes so I've never done an exorcism <laughs> <laughs> I would love to if anybody uh <laughs> As a demon, give me a call. I did some Oh, that would have been great for the marketing do campaign. It. That would have been oh, great to have like a video of you actually like performing an exorcism yeah. with the book. <laughs> right, exactly. With youth group, not, not with anything else. As, like trying yeah, to get right. The... Youth group in place of a Bible. <laughs> yeah, it's trying, like, <laughs> I think you should start um, using that in place of a Bible everywhere. Like when they go to a stand to like swear on the Bible, they're swearing on yeah, youth group. Yeah, sure. I just think it's great marketing. <laughs> Use it, yeah, but get it in, get it in courts. You have to put your yes. hand on it. This is great. When, when you ideas. go to a hotel, it's in the drawer instead of the Bible. It's the, the youth, uh, issue of uh, right. issue of youth group. Obviously, um, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. <laughs> hey, um, it, there's enough hotels out there. That's a number of sales right there, man. Oh, like, yeah, just... absolutely. Jeez. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I think the fact that there is a like more personal aspect yeah. to this book than other things I have written, um, that adds a little added layer of like if people reject the book, they're rejecting me. <laughs> so, um, and I don't think that will happen. I have, I have like very, I, I feel very great about how it's been received so far. And I, I think it has a shot definitely, but um, it, 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 it does, it does, it does feel a little bit higher stakes because there is so much personal stuff in this. And, and is there also on top of the personal aspect of it too, you've written, you've written TV shows and things like that too, that where they're like, Writers of TV shows, sadly enough, you know, maybe not for me because I like follow it a lot more, um, but are kind of backseat. You're behind the scenes. You don't really get to see it. So like if you write a joke or something like that for a TV show and someone doesn't laugh at it, it's like you're not it's not your face. Sure. That's you telling the joke or whatever, but like uh, or something like this. So this is personal to the point where this is a creator own like this is a thing that you, course, it's your yeah. story and that you're out here promoting it you know all your tv shows very rarely where you have a podcast being like you should watch my tv show this weekend right. uh you know and, and so that's also a, a, a side of it that people the writer and the artist of a book 
are front and center for a lot of people who read comics. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, no, I no say. kidding. Uh, yeah, and I I love working in TV. I totally love doing it. Um, but you are a like smaller cog in a bigger machine, right? Like, mm. and 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 you know, and like youth group isn't just my vision. We there's Bowen, and of course there's great editors, uh, Callista Brill I mentioned, and our kind of day to day editor Ben Wilgus had a lot of insight. Ben is a great comics writer himself, and like pitched a lot of good stuff and good jokes and good. Uh, good kind of like story fixes for stuff that ended up being in the book. So like comics are a group effort, uh, but TV is a very big group effort. Like there are multiple writers, there's mm -hmm. a showrunner, there's a director. I work in animation a lot. So there's storyboard artists and then there's executives and then there's the studio. So just like, it's a lot of people given a lot of notes mm -hmm. and like, they're not, always bad sometimes they're very good sometimes things change for the best but like it it it, it just it, there's a smaller chance that what you write on the page makes it to the screen exactly like that mm -hmm. right like it just it will go through changes your script will get changed and like it will hopefully turn out great and it'll hopefully be <laughs> kind of like along the lines of your vision yeah. but just like there's going to be changes yeah and I, I I believe, and I think the generic public who watches a TV show, if you just say, obviously you don't write on South Park, but say South Park out there, you don't like an sure. episode of South Park. People just don't like the episode of South Park. They're not going out there being like, who wrote this episode? Right. You know, like sure, a lot sure, of people sure. just like, oh, that was a miss, whatever. And they go on and they watch the next episode or so on and so forth. But like if someone doesn't like youth group, it's like, oh. Jordan Morris. I don't think I want to buy the rest of this. You know, <laughs> right, like, yes. There's like the more of your name is right on it. It's like, it's not like it's right oh, on yeah. the top. Uh, on oh yeah. You're voicing all my worst fears. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes, that's, 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 so that's why it also, but putting your personal side of it out there too is great. I mean, uh, the uh, we just talked. Oh, we, we we read for my book club at my local comic book shop. Uh, a haunted girl. I don't know if you read this book from Ethan Sachs uh, no, and, and his daughter Naomi. And it's about mental health and suicide. Mm -hmm. and, and it's Naomi went through this stuff. She's a she's a college age. A uh, mm -hmm. woman who wrote co-wrote this with her dad, and she put that out there for the world to see. Not only her yeah. problems oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. locally, with it now it's on the world stage, and, and so yeah, there's this risk of putting your personal, uh, you know, thoughts and feelings and also stories out there uh, is a big risk in hoping that people do it. But I feel like you know, let's bring it back up to a positive thing sure. here that you did a very good job at it. Oh, I thank think it's you. wonderful. Thank so you. there you go. I, I, I'm a small person in this world, but I, I do think that people are going to well receive, uh, or going to be well received with people out there because it's a unique, uh, funny horror. There's a little bit of everything in there, honestly, for, for everyone uh, uh, with Youth Group. And is it available, going to be available on paperback and hardcover? Is that what I Paperback saw? and hardcover, yeah, on uh, July awesome. 16th. I love that. Uh, yeah, either. I love yeah, that. Definitely, yeah, the hardback's a little pricier, but boy, it's attractive. So. Well, it, it is. That's To me, I'm, I'm a hardcover kind of, it's harder to read, I think, sometimes. But like to me, it's like you read it once, and then you put it on the shelf, and you read it again later on. It needs to withstand moving. It needs to withstand yeah. other books in the shelf, all that stuff. The number of times I put a like you know paperback trade paperback in the side shelf here, and it's like got crypt back page because it slid in weird right. or something yeah. like that. Like a hardcover is a nice. It's worth yeah. the investment. Easier to maybe. loan out too. You're probably going to get it back, uh, you know, in better condition if you loan it to somebody. So yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm sure this book will also be at your libraries probably if you ask your library. Yeah, can... definitely. I, I that's also something you talked about the the uh, importance of pre ordering, which we yeah. love, but also like you know times are tough like if if you want to read a book like request at your local library it has a similar effect right like mm -hmm. that effect of telling the bookseller that you like the book or you want to order the book it puts it on their radar same thing with a librarian right it might not be something that they knew about and now that you mention it to them they know about it and you know they'll order a copy a sale is a sale so uh yeah we love a library sale so definitely yeah with with this book or any book you're hearing about on this podcast like if times are tough or if you don't know you want to take a chance on it but it sounds kind of cool request it at your local library we love that i, I do find myself too renting uh, you know books at a library or or like oh, this yeah, where they too. got an advanced pdf that i buy the book afterwards about like you know what i mean like yeah. it's like it, i mean some people's budgets don't fit that 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 philosophy but like i do think that you know, a lot of times if i get an advanced copy of a book and i read it and i really like it i am going to buy that like i don't Sure. Physically have to at this point, right? right? Right. Like I don't actually, if I want to read the book again, I still have the PDF that you sent me. So like I don't have to, but yeah. I 
want to because of the fact that I do want to own this and I do want to have it on my shelf. I'm, I'm a hoarder in that sense too, like a, a hoarder, a collector, you know, quotations <laughs> yeah. here. Same thing, right? Um, but yeah, the idea that I want to be able to I own see, this. I can see I your like background. You have a very tidy, you have a very tidy <laughs> background. I don't know if the rest of your house is it, a disaster it's area, good. but you don't want to see this tidy. side. No, no, exactly. Yeah. It, it, there's, there's a, feeling behind it and it and it's gone the opposite way jordan i will tell you the same no, thing no, where no. i've read something and been like i'm definitely not buying this now so that has gone the opposite sure. way because i was able to read it ahead of time but yeah going to a library a lot of times if i really like something i'm like well i want to add this to my collection now i didn't take the risk that i didn't like it so i'll take the risk at a library where i can yeah. take it out read it oh i loved it i'll go buy the actual copy or order it at my local bookstore um but yeah libraries are huge i think i think there's one missing missing thing that a lot of people don't really understand is you can get graphic novels at a library oh, yeah. they have them on the shelf <laughs> oh yeah i love it I, I read so many comics from the library and just have over the course of my life <laughs> right like and the hey comics i don't need to tell you i don't need to tell the listeners to this podcast <laughs> expensive hobby <laughs> um <laughs> and it can stack up depending on how many books you're reading a month Month. So uh, yes, yeah, it, library it, a great way to sample yeah, stuff. Great yeah, way to exactly. sample stuff. Um, but so you wrote this mostly over the pandemic and things like mm -hmm. that. Like, are you working on? I don't want to get past this. Obviously, no, you're, that's okay. you're in this love for uh, releasing this book right now. You're right in the heart of it. But like, I'm guessing you're wanting to tell more stories uh, in comic book format. In, in the, yeah, in the future? I would love to. I don't have any like projects at the moment. I would love to have uh, some or one or whatever. But uh, yeah, I, I, I hope that like, I would love to do more youth group stuff, more stuff mm -hmm. in this world, more stuff with this tone. So like, yeah, I hope folks check it out. I, I, I think that like, if, it does well they will ask for another one so yeah if it, if it sounds cool to you and if you're like if you check out the book and you like it definitely uh tell a friend leave a nice review uh yeah i would love to do more i think mm -hmm. uh yeah uh that would that would be such a thrill it, it, it quickly if with bubble and then this yeah those fans of bubble will like this in your opinion or is it something oh, like yeah. is it because your style of writing is similar or is it sure different like, what, what... Uh, yeah definitely uh yeah a similar kind of like genre comedy matchup uh bubble is obviously four grown-ups lots of swears lots of gore lots of sex jokes um <laughs> Uh, youth group is for a YA audience, so the uh, language isn't quite as spicy. Um, but yeah, I think if you like if you like a little comedy in your genre, then um, I think Bubble and Youth Group are it's a it's a good double feature. And I will say, like I always say with people when I talk to them about YA stuff, is YA means that there's a limit in how low it should go, but does that mean for age wise, it does not mean there's a there's a there's a max ceiling on of how course. high it should yeah. go. So you can be 98 years old and read a YA book, in my opinion. So that it's one of those things. YA is out there not to say you have to be a young adult. Right. It means that you shouldn't be a five year old. Like that's the <laughs> right, that's exactly. the big thing where you're trying to say here is not there's no uh, uh you know cap to how old you have to be to yeah. read a YA book, uh for 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 sure. Um, but yeah. July 16th is the day it hits local bookstores uh, and bookstores everywhere, I should say. That's right. When, yeah. when Booth Group is. And then July 17th is when it hits your local comic book shop because Tuesday's book release and Wednesday is comic book release. So that's how yes. that works in the, in the, in the world. Uh, likely, I like how it does work that way for this. Some publishers end up being like, it's in bookstores, and then six weeks later, it's in comic book stores. But right, I know. Th this does look like it's going to be that 16th and 17th <laughs> sure. uh, time frame, which is awesome because, uh, you know, don't forget the LCSs. Oh, please don't. Yes, uh, we, 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 we love them for sure. And definitely like those pre-orders mean so much to them. Um, yeah. For sure. So, and locally yep. for us uh, and here in Maine, uh, you can go to Galactic Comics and Collectibles, and you'll be able to grab that there as well as hopefully oh. Briar Patch in downtown Bangor. I haven't talked to Gibran about it yet. Uh, I've been so busy, but yeah, um, we should check that out. So if, if you haven't, if you are local to this area, not very many people are. Most of my listeners are all over the United States. But if you are, tell Gibran he'll he'll order it for you for oh, sure nice. over yeah, at Briar Patch. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you're, you must be still pretty busy. You still writing TV stuff? You doing all that stuff on the side too? Or is your focus yeah, right yeah. now on this? Uh, there's some, yeah, I've, I've been working on some TV stuff uh, that's pretty heavily NDA'd. Um, yes. Uh, so, but that will come out eventually and hopefully you'll hear about it. Um, but this is actually kind of cool. Um, I, I'm i going to do Comic-Con for Youth Group. I'm going to oh. do San Diego and then I'm kind of going to hit the road. So I've never been like a con guy before. Like I've been to cons and I grew up in Southern California. So mm -hmm. I went to, I've been to San Diego, you know, 20 times. Times. But um, yeah, I'm kind of going to hit the road and set up a little table in Artist Alley and uh, hopefully get that sandwich board we talked about and just kind of try and hand sell youth group at cons, which I've like never done before. I'm kind of sprinkle so. water on people. That's 
Like oh yeah, I should of, have a whole like, baptismal power of... <laughs> uh, <laughs> baptismal pop up, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, yeah. The the uh, we can actually do that. Uh, my uh, uh, I just got a advanced copy of C.J. Lee's book American Rapture, uh, Ooh, which is also very. Uh, uh, oh, I've heard um, that's great. It's unbelievable so far, but like, yeah, I think that people uh, you could do a book booth next to them and and do the whole like holy water and 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 yeah. <laughs> no, uh, uh, San Diego. This will actually come out on July seventeenth. So San Diego is this weekend. So oh that's gosh, uh, or yeah. this coming weekend. That that time frame. No, the next weekend. Whatever. It's after this. So the if you 20- listen to this, yeah, and you so are I will in San be there Diego. doing a panel on the twenty sixth. Yep. So then uh, signings and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, definitely. So. If you're uh, if you're at the old San Diego Comic Con, uh, look me up. He'll be he'll be the one wearing the uh, sandwich board, walking around. <laughs> right, telling people don't, to repent. <laughs> don't walk up to the person wearing the sandwich board because it's probably not going to be Jordan. So just let you know. Oh yeah, <laughs> I guess there are people at Comic Con with actual <laughs> repent sandwich boards. <laughs> so, so, I mean, if ask, if you tell see them that to person, buy the book, but like, yeah, let them know. <laughs> let them know about youth group. Might be up their alley. Um, <laughs> a sales yes. a sale. We already said that. A sales, sales a sale. sale. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, even if a, uh, if a weird religious fanatic buys the book, they still bought the book. Hey, they bought the book. Hey, that's they the, you can pay the bills. First, second likes it, you'll be able to make a second one. There you yeah, go. Yeah, um, that's, the, that's the dream. Well, yeah, I, I really appreciate you, Jordan, you taking the time out of your day uh, to chat on here. Uh, I hope everybody goes out and buys the book because I, I only talk to people on this podcast that I really want to talk to because I like their stuff. And so uh, usually that's a good sign on my part that if you're on here, it means I like your stuff. So uh, hopefully people go out and buy it in, in droves because – uh, I want more youth group. I think other people will like it. So hopefully people buy it. Thank you. Thank you. And hey, coming from a former youth group kid, that, that means a lot. Hopefully we got that right. I buy a copy for Christmas for my dad. There you go. Right. Makes a great gift. <laughs> thank you so much, Jordan. Thanks, dude. Yeah, this is fun chat. Yeah.